we are still looking at G1, which is area. Now, yesterday we really focused on the formulas. Today we're going to focus on the formulas and substitution. So just to recap, we have square, rectangle, rhombus, and parallelograms that use the exact same formula, length times width or base times height. Either one is fine. But with a square, you can add an extra formula that is S squared. So then with a triangle, you can divide it in half and we get one half base times height. So you can take half of the base or half of the height. Either one is completely fine. You could even multiply the base and the height and then take half. Again, completely fine. Just remember, if you're taking half, you're dividing by two. Then we have a trapezoid. Trapezoid formula is very similar to the... Um, area of a triangle except we're going to add the two bases now in order to have the two bases added we have to make sure that the two bases are parallel to each other that's how you know what the two bases are and your height has to be a 90 degree angle that connects those two bases so let's go ahead and take a look at how we're going to use these so this is a square obviously well, as close as we can get to it but we have a a, a equals let me get this a little bit bigger a equals S squared. So again, on this one, we could use length times width or base times height, but with it being a square, we have that added extra formula we could use. S squared meaning side times side. Here we're going to put 4 squared, which is 4 times 4. So our area here is 16 inches squared. Now, the reason that we're talking about inches squared is we have 4 rows of squares here and four rows of squares here. So that gives us 16 total squares, so 16 inches squared. All right, so now let's look at some triangles. All right, so the formula for a triangle is A equals one-half base times height, or you might see A equals base times height divided by two. Same exact formula, just how you use it is a little different. All right, so a few things we need to talk about. We have a base and a height right here. It makes that 90 degree angle, okay? That's how you know your height is theirs because it's a 90 degree angle. This five inch, it's gonna be given a lot of times just to see if you know what you're using. The five would be great if we're using uh, finding perimeter, but since we're finding area, we only need base and we only need height. This is what we call a hypotenuse. It is across from the right angle it's something you will use later uh, when you're dealing with different types of other triangles and when you start doing some formulas to find different sides of triangles. So for sixth grade purposes, we do not need the, uh, the hypotenuse unless we're using it for perimeter. Okay. Uh, so here we have A equals one half base on height. Our base is four. So we're going to put four in the place of B and our height is three. Now, a lot of things we can do here. We can take half of 4 and get 2, and then say 2 times 3. Let me just show you all that. 2 times 3 is 6. You could take half of 3 and get 1.5, and so you're going to say 4 times 1.5. That's also 6. You could multiply 3 and 4 and get 12, and then take half of it, which is also 6. So it doesn't matter how you do it as long as you get the same thing um, consecutively. So we have... You can take all of these choices, but do not do this one. This is the one of those misconceptions that we see a lot. A lot of kids take half of four and half of three. You can't do that. You either got to take half of four or half of three or multiply four and three and then take half. All right, so let's get that one gone. And then we're going to pull in a trapezoid. All right, so a trapezoid is very similar to a triangle. So if it has two bases, we're going to add together. So we have A equals... 1 half base 1 plus base 2 times the height. Now, these two bases have to be parallel to each other. So we have a 6 inch here and a 10 inch. These are parallels. They are not going to touch. That's how we know that those are our two bases. So we're going to plug those in. And we're going to put 6 plus 10. And then our height, again, makes that right angle. So it's going to be 4. The 7 right here is a slanted height. It is not going to be used unless you're finding perimeter. All right, so now we're going to do order of operations. Six, we're going to do parentheses. 6 plus 10, that's going to be 16. Now, just like with the triangle, we can do a lot of things here. We can take half of 16, we could take half of 4, or we can multiply 16 and 4 and then take half. 
Those are all great choices, but do not take half of 16 and half of four. That's going to give us the wrong answer. There's one added we could do here. We could also take half of six using distributive property and half of 10. Because it's in the parentheses, you have to distribute out that one half to both of those factors. So make sure that you are uh, doing that to both of them. If you take half of six, you've got to take half of the 10. This one's a little different, whereas we said we can't take half of 16 and half of four because that's multiplication. This right here is multiplying one half times the six and the 10. So make sure that we are using those. Oh, I'm sorry. Let me tell you the answer. All right, so half of 16 is going to be eight, and then you can do eight times four. Half of four is going to be two, and then two times 16. Or you could uh, do it the other way. That's fine, too. So I take half of four. I think of two. 16 times 2, that's going to give us 32 inches squared. So there's our area. So again, use your formulas. Substitute it in properly, guys. Make sure that you're basing your height from a right angle to know which one is which because sometimes they're going to give you more numbers than you actually need. So make sure you're paying attention to which numbers and where they're located.